distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I usually start with an anecdote, and uh, uh, not that uh, this is a targeted anecdote, anecdote I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, what is the price of this coconut? Uh, he said, okay, I mean, tell me, for why do you want this coconut? He said, no, I'm going to take it to the temple. Oh, in that case, he said it is 50 rupees. Uh, this fellow was surprised. He said, look, I'm taking it to the temple, and why it is 50 rupees? But he said, no, if you take it home, it is 20 rupees. And, uh, but then if you take it to gift it to a friend, it is 30 rupees. And this fellow was surprised. He said, look, if I take 10 to the temple, then, oh, he said, if you take 10, it will be 600 rupees. And this fellow said, what type of pricing you have? He said, look, I am exactly doing what you are doing to me. If I use this electricity for my domestic purpose, you charge me less. And if I use for industry, you charge me more. If I use for commercial purpose, still more. And if I consume more, I pay more. Now, the same thing that I learned before I retired, <laughs> I am implementing in my new shop. It must be a very fair thing because I kept on trying that for my whole career. <laughs> well, and this is just an anecdote. And, uh, but this is an important implication, you know, the market, the pricing that we talk about. Uh, somewhere this, uh, you know, comes up and ultimately uh, that becomes an important issue which will address uh, a number of issues that were brought out. In fact, Rahul and me, we sat down yesterday. We discussed this uh, paper and uh, uh, I was very impressed uh, with the macro uh, energy uh, graph he has given that at some point the base load has to be maintained. Uh, in fact, if you go to the cities in India, it is a macro picture of the demand pattern, but in cities, and the, rightly so, it has a dual mode of, uh, you know, peak consumption, which means the solar can play a very big role. And if you look at up to 8.39 when the peak load is very high, with two to three hours, uh, you know, uh, uh, battery uh, reserve or uh, storage, we can do wonders. In fact, when the Prime Minister went to, uh, you know, Tesla thing to see the battery, the types of technologies that are coming and that way the cost of lithium ion batteries are coming down. Uh, in the near future, that should not be a, you know, big uh, problem. But uh, I must also uh, take this opportunity to uh, tell a few things that what has been done uh, between the last time I went came to a uh, function uh, uh, and now. Number one, uh, India has increased its carbon tax from 50 rupees per ton of coal to 100 rupees to 200 rupees. And no other country in the world has increased its carbon tax in this manner. It, is, uh, it has gone from 50 rupees to 200 rupees. And there is a uh, plan that, uh, not plan, in fact, it provides uh, that if it uh, so desired, then it can be made even 300 rupees. And the other thing about uh, uh, is that, uh, 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 you know, we have, uh, also change the Solar Energy Corporation of India to Renewable Energy Corporation of India. That is because 175,000 megawatt is only 100,000 megawatt solar, uh, 60,000 megawatt wind. So to take care of this huge target, you know, we have changed the Solar Energy Corporation of India to Renewable Energy Corporation of India so that it, its mandate has got expanded. It can take up more projects. And number three, what India is doing, uh, and that is, uh, that is uh, not only the uh, the results that you have got from your study. Uh, and this is again the, you know, Honorable Prime Minister's idea of a global solar alliance, but this alliance is limited to the uh, 110 countries or more so, uh, between the line of cancer and Capricorn. And it is called INSPA, uh, it's International Agency for Solar Policy and Applications. Because we feel that these countries have unique problems, unique geography, and given the technology available today, uh, the one billion people who are in darkness, they can be given home lighting systems, they can be given uh, solar lights, and uh, it is possible to have an international organization, uh, 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 you know, which can uh, help this to be achieved in a given time span. And uh, the RBI has done some wonderful things, and that I also feel it's my, uh, and the F Department of Finance together. Uh, for the first time, investment in renewable up to 15 crores has been brought under the uh, uh, the priority sector lending. Suppose you would like to invest 15 crores uh, uh, or any investor, now it becomes much easier to get the money from the bank because this is coming under the priority sector lending. And the, to promote rooftop, which is around 40,000 megawatt in this seven years, 
uh, government have also told that this rooftop loans will be part of the home loan, which means the interest rate will be less, tax benefits will be avail available, and, uh, and this also comes under the priority sector lending. Uh, this apart, of course, the RPO, the Renewable Purchase Obligation, which is the sole basis on which uh, you know, renewable energy is, is purchased by the states, that also going to be revised upwards because that is the way actually the renewable energy share will go up. Uh, and to address the issues of balancing and filling also, although to, uh, you know, it is uh, a national balancing policy is being worked out by the CEA and uh, keeping the, you know, countries that hydro, uh, keeping the states in view who have more hydro capacity and pumped storage and even the gas-based uh, plants that are, that are being uh, thought of. Uh, the idea is, of course, uh, it is essential that we have a macro plan, a balancing policy, and then only the renewable energy can flourish uh, uh, everywhere. We are also talking about the 100,000 solar pumps we have given. In fact, the number can go up because we find this is tremendously useful to the farmers, and that is a very inclusive process. In fact, some states like Karnataka, where uh, they have not only given solar pumps to the farmers, they have also given generating uh, capacity to the farmers up to uh, some 3 megawatt they have given at a very good uh, price. But more so what Karnataka has done is that uh, they, they found that the farmer uses for 200 days the electricity and in other days they can sell it to the grid and Karnataka gives around 9 rupees, uh, uh, 9 rupees 34 paisa per unit which is a very good price. And uh, 21 states today, they have uh, they have policies which we call the net metering where individuals can change their house to a powerhouse. <coughs> they can produce power, they can consume as much as they want and this they can sell. That, uh, that apart, uh, we are also trying to strengthen the grid and the green energy corridor where the, the first phase where 44,000 crores is being planned to be spent in eight states. The phase two is coming and phase two is connecting the solar parks, the 25 solar parks uh, of which 21 are in place. In fact, uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, Honorable Prime Minister has the Pragati program where he connects to all the chief secretaries of the states and the secretaries. This is being discussed uh, uh, as one of the agenda items. That shows the priority that uh, we attach to the uh, solar park program. But the broad idea, I'm told that uh, internationally, the investment in generation and the grid, it is the ratio should be around one is to one. Whereas in India, I'm told the ratio is one is to 0.4 which means we do need to invest a lot more in, you know, grid connectivity, a lot more in, in ensuring that there is a hassle-free flow of energy from one part of the country to the other. And, uh, uh, and also, we need to strengthen the grid so that the uh, solar-rich states or the wind-rich states could put power into the grid and this would flow to the, you know, parts of the country where we actually require it. Uh, I'm happy to know that uh, the, uh, you know renewable energy plays uh, you know important uh, role and actually helps uh, helps uh, this thing. In fact, many countries have come up with uh, examples where renewable energy helped a lot. In fact, at times of crisis to balance the uh, uh, grid, and given the uh, you know type of uh, non-silicon-based technologies that are you know very promising and which are likely to come to the market, or even silicon-based uh, panels which are malleable. Uh, and which are much more efficient uh, coming to the market. I'm sure in days to come, uh, renewable energy uh, not only will be, uh, you know, cheaper, the grid parity that we are talking about. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a lot of hidden demand for investment. In 2015, we had the first uh, global investors meet in the renewable energy area. We call it reinvest 2015. And we have again planned for February 18th, 19th, and uh, 20th of uh, next year, Honorable Prime Minister will inaugurate, and you are almost welcome. Uh, and that was crucial to bring down, uh, for the first time actually, you know, we found out what is the demand for renewable energy. So we floated two certificates, one is called the Green Energy Commitment by the companies, and the Green Energy Commitment by the banks. The companies put together, they gave a commitment for 273,000 megawatt of investment in renewable energy alone. And for the first time, we knew that there's a lot of uh, demand from companies to come and invest in India. And the second surprising thing was the, the banks, some 70,000 megawatt commitment, financial commitment they gave, including State Bank of India, leading with 15,000 megawatt of commitment. And, uh, uh, and uh, 
this year when we are you know tendering around 15000 megawatt you will be surprised to know that if a state goes for 1000 megawatt of tender the offer that they get is around 10 times that which uh, and the prices uh, uh, have come down to so much 5 rupees uh, 5 paisa and you know it was 18 rupees in 2010 in 5 years time the quoted price uh, the lowest price is come down from 18 rupees to 5 rupees and that is a substantial achievement and we think with reinvest 2016 uh, this price we will try to bring it down to around 4 rupees 50 paisa. That is because the equity funds, the pension funds, uh, for the first time they are putting their you know, thoughts to invest in India. And we have two challenges. Of course, we require around 100 billion dollars to translate this dream of 175,000 megawatt. And uh, uh, that's why we are trying to mobilize funds from World Bank, from ADB, from uh, KFW, from European Investment Bank. But the, the crucial issue there is the hedging cost. You can bring in dollars, you can spend it, but when you return the money, that is working out around 8% extra. And in India, it's 14% the loan that the sector gets, and that is too costly. So the challenges that we have to address, apart from balancing, is not only the issue of land, which is, of course, not a problem for us, because we have millions of hectares of wasteland. We have 200,000 square kilometers of desert. We have a lot of canal banks, uh, uh, water surface that can be utilized, but capital is an issue. Uh, uh, it is issue not so much the capital, but the cost of capital. But I am very happy to inform that uh, even LIC, you know, who traditionally only deal with insurance and reserve, they have been kind enough to consider that they will also dedicate a part of their capital towards the renewable energy promotion. The Exim Bank, they have also plans to participate in this revolution. Uh, in fact, we are surprised the way we have got support from so many quarters to translate, translate this dream of 175,000 megawatt. Uh, I am sure, although many people say it's a very ambitious, I personally, uh, or even officially, don't find that it is unachievable. We have very clear blueprint. We have the plans in place, and we are sure we will achieve that uh, target. In fact, when I read this today in the paper, that uh, Honorable Prime Minister has talked to expand this target further, uh, which of course is correctly brought out in this paper, has many challenges. Balancing is a challenge, wheeling is a challenge, banking is a challenge, storage is a challenge, but then only once we decide to achieve something, these problems will come up. Uh, the other day, uh, somebody rang up from Madhya Pradesh saying that, look, the law says that the developer must apply for LTA, the long-term access, but for the first time, we have got a solar park and no developer has yet come. And the park needs to apply for this. The law was amended. And now the solar park can apply for LTA. So we will have legal challenges, financial challenges. But India is not uh, weak or a country of you know, 1.2 billion people can definitely handle these challenges. And what is in the interest of environment and people and the poor, that will be translated. Thank you. Thank you. Because the secretary has to leave, so may I, uh, uh, yeah put uh, questions to you. To get a realistic assessment of what is the, going to be the actual cost of power to a distribution company or to a consumer, you've got to add, as you very rightly said, massive investment, probably two and a half times more on transmission for each megawatt of renewable capacity that you'll be adding. And along with that, storage batteries. So if you start calculating that today, what is the transmission cost for each megawatt? So you've got to add that figure, you've got to add remodeling of all the distribution networks in the country. And I think the time has come to digitize the distribution system in India. Because there is, as Rahul pointed out very correctly, there is no real assessment or real time of what actually is the load shedding in the country. Just yesterday I was exchanging notes with the CEA and uh, I was horrified to find that still we are just believing on a statement given by the state load dispatch center. There is no real time measuring of all the feeders in the country, barring as he pointed out probably Karnataka. So what would be the cost of that? And we good to talk of uh, balancing power from uh, hydro, pumped hydro in particular. You know, the 
space for pumped hydro in India is extremely limited. We've got to analyze where are the places, get over the environmental bottlenecks there. It's a first priority. I entirely agree with you for grid balancing, which is already skewed even in the conventional side. So this will be adding to the problems. And last of all, I think something which in today's papers also is highlighted, that the, what will be the foreign exchange cost of importing the generating equipment of solar, which is going to be available at five rupees a unit. The domestic industry is already up in arms. We will have to import this, but they're wanting to impose the anti-dumping duties now and some other taxes, and what will be the FE requirement? So I think uh, a lot of homework will need to be done. And uh, as Rahul pointed out, that distribution companies in India are not willing to buy power even at three rupees a unit. So if all this is going to add up to 10 rupees a unit, how are we going to pay for that power? So I hope that kind of homework is being done simultaneously before we announce these targets. Thank you. Um, two, two points I would like to make. One is a <clears throat> small point. That is, it is good that we saw the graphs and idea about the load shedding. What is the shortage? But what about the frequency disturbance? And I think uh, Indian Institute of Science worked on that, the scientists, that what is the equivalent loss? I think we should also look into that, because in many states, this is a horrible situation, particularly in the panchayat area. This is one small point. The, uh, the other point is a macro level point. In fact, uh, uh, the chair also mentioned in the, in the beginning, and uh, both the other speakers mentioned that you know that this resource, finally, ultimately, the finance is a is, is, is problem, you know, the challenge. Now, <clears throat> here I would like to, I am very glad to know that carbon tax and coal on coal, we are increasing. But my question is, what are we doing? What government is doing that tax revenue? You know, here I would like to draw your attention to a macro issue that, in fact, if you look into the literature, of economics of energy and particularly non-renewable resources. For the sustainability, several important uh, writers like uh, uh, El Sarafi of World Bank and, uh, you know, Hartwick, a very eminent economist, they said that to resolve the problem of sus unsustainability with exhaustible resources, the way out is tax the resource rent, entire resource into the backstop technology, the technology which is coming. Now, I think we should change our mindset that coal or renewable, I think it should be the two, there is a complementarity. We use, let us use up coal and speed up our growth. And, but then the entire resource rent be collected, invested in, in funds, you know, it should be treated as a cess, not a, just a tax revenue as a transfer. And in fact, the climate funds should also focus on this issue. But these climate funds at various regional level or global level, even I understand that Canada is thinking of proposing something at the Commonwealth level. Now, this should be encouraged, but what they would do, the, all the severance tax of any fossil fuel, I would be in favor of mobilizing that and financing the transition. Thank you very much. I wanted to ask you that, you know, in the context of this humongous uh, target that you have, I have no doubt at all that because the government is headed by Prime Minister Modi, it shall be achieved. But my question really is about the quality of the achievement. You know, since 1990, we really realized on, uh, we have relied on setting free the animal spirits of entrepreneurs and that sort of considered to be self-regulating because if you invest badly, you end up making a loss. But when you have a government set target, 
the downside, as we saw in the U.S. in 2008, was that with this sort of stimulus, you know, fiscal stimulus being provided, as it inevitably will have to be for such a big target. What are the, do you think, well, I will not ask you, have you ever, have you thought up any safeguards? But do you think it's a sensible thing to start working on some safeguards, knowing that you're entering into a, a pretty uh, sort of a, a dodgy territory for, from the public investment-led point of view? Uh, the load shedding thing is available. Most of the meters around the country have real-time clock. There's a feature and then power on time. You don't use it. Simple thing that we need to do. I have, I have questions about, you know, and uh, I think uh, Mr. Rajdan raised. We're talking about levelized cost of renewable energy. We're not looking at intermittency. Uh, Professor Paul Joskov of MIT has done extensive analysis on this. And if you look at the intermittency, in which is what uh, Rahul alluded to, I think it will be different economics altogether. And we need to keep that in mind. You talk about 40,000 megawatts of rooftop solars. Now look at the, how the economics of the discoms is working today. The guy who put a rooftop solar would be one who can afford it. So he's paying the higher tariff today. He wouldn't pay you money for 320 days in a year. And 40 days when you don't have the sun out, he'll be loading the grid. So the grid has to be available for that capacity, but it won't be getting return from the guy who's today paying. So it'll become further worse. Lesson from Germany. The market cap of the utilities went down by 500 billion euros because of solar and, the, and, and, and what the solar did to the utilities economics. We should seriously learn from that. And what happened in other countries where you artificially increased the, the renewables, uh, Spain couldn't afford it, Germany uh, somehow did it, England has just uh, a couple of weeks back announced that they're backtracking, Australia did that. There must be a learning somewhere for us. And I appreciate, Rahul, your balancing uh, thing and that the load curve analysis that you're doing. There's enough technology available within the country to support that. Uh, you know, we, India was the second country in the world to introduce what I'll call smart meters, electronic meter with all the memory and, and everything which is available. These meters are there. We need to use it. Uh, you know, and, and uh, technology, affordable technology is available. Other thing is the reliability of this instrument, the, the equipment that we use, inverters especially in solar. Large solars would generate a bit of harmonics, which if you don't balance the grid overall, would cause a problem. And we need to then look at the performance of other equipments connected to the grid. We could cause a massive problem if we're not careful about that. So I appreciate the debate which is happening here. Uh, this is the first of its kind that I've seen. Uh, I'm also president of EMA, so there is enough capability available within the country to produce the right kind of equipment uh, before we import and, and, and cause the kind of forex uh, exchange load on, on, on the country. There is enough capability available. Thank you. The net metering rules have come and um, so India, yes, the problems are huge. But still, I was so impressed with this vice chancellor who was uh, you know, earlier a director of an IIT. Despite all this, he is going to further put it to you know, the rooftop. I met a Swamiji in, uh, who addresses 500,000 people sitting on a, below a, you know, on a pedestal, uh, some temporary roof. They had LNT and they put 7.5 megawatt of rooftop. It is in Bayas, Punjab, and uh, I'm told it's the biggest in Asia. And uh, I said, do you have problems? He said, oh, plenty. First thing, I got a notice from the income tax people saying that you prove it is environment friendly. And promptly we said, can I give a letter? And then we are debating who can give a letter. Uh, I mean, off the record, but yes, uh, tremendous challenges. But there is so much of spirit behind you know, the people who understand. And uh, uh, he said, Mr. Tripathi, when I go to the DISCOM office, they really don't like my rooftop, apart from, you know, because it's, they're a charitable society, I'm told, and uh, they can't invest that money because they say, uh, you, it is not charitable if you sell power to the DISCOM. It is a violation of your thing. We have a tremendous challenges. I mean, whether the university or a charity foundation uh, or the park I mentioned in Madhya Pradesh, uh, it's a complex country, but then we have com tremendous abilities. People are moving. And this Swamiji told me, look, Mr. Tripathi, until the intelligentsia in this country treats renewable energy a form of superior energy because for every megawatt you put, 50 cars are off the road. And 
if these 50 cars are off the road, the most beneficiaries are the people who sleep in the roadside, not the rich who sit like this, air conditioned and, and think about, you know, load shedding. And he had a tremendous message. And still, I don't think in our accounting thing, which we took 70 years to develop, and uh, maybe they said that Britishers, when they left India, they took away justice and left the law behind. So our accounting systems, they don't give that environmental accounting. We never say, look, you put a renewable, this is the production cost, this is the distribution cost, and uh, very the accounting of environmental benefits to the poor. So that point, I'm very happy you uh, brought it out. And thank you for telling NCF deployment. In fact, we have been fighting that give us 100% money that you are getting. Uh, but largely, we are getting the money now. In fact, the budget of the ministry has gone up from 1,500 crores to uh, almost 3,500 crores in last year and a half. So which means more and more money we are getting uh, uh, into it. Uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the other greed issues, uh, of course, it is in fact uh, when renewable energy takes over the Western India, Gujarat, Maharashtra, uh, Rajasthan, uh, uh, and the cold places in JNK, uh, you know, for the first time you'll find that energy can move from west to east. It was always the other direction. We do need a, you know, hassle-free infrastructure to evacuate power. That is sine qua non. If investment has to be made, it has to be made. But uh, a country cannot, uh, you know, afford without a particular flexible and hassle-free system of evacuation. We have to have a grid. We have to have grid, and I'm sure our engineers will be able to uh, do that. Things are improving quite a bit. Uh, but uh, in fact, we are now going for a, we found that, you know, now we put a green energy corridor. In some patches, we find that the corridor is there, but the projects are not there. And now we also found that there are projects, the corridor is missing. So now the step two has come, where the energy corridor is there, we are bringing in more projects. Where projects are there, we are extending the corridor. So it is a continuous process where actually you play a big role because uh, Rahul's analysis yesterday was uh, very nice. That particular macro graph was so impressive. And uh, it has to be a continuous thing, and I'm really thankful to you for the comments you made and the studies you make. We need more such studies, and uh, both micro and uh, macro level studies. Thanks to all of you once again. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, Rahul, do you want to say anything last? No, I, you well, other than a deep uh, uh, from the heart, thank you for your precious time. and. All of us, I think, and especially us, will be sure to brief you and come up with solutions or steps forward. You've called it a process. That's exactly what renewables or all energy are. It's not a destination, it's a journey. And so two things struck, stood out to me that I think can feed back to the point about the, the CES and these. The storage required out of solar is not very long. So maybe we need to redouble our efforts on storage technologies. Now, pumped hydro may have limits, but we need to do more R&D, more innovation, more experimenting. Second thing that was also very interesting, home loans can include the rooftop, because the financing angle from an end user was one of the bottlenecks. So I think, you have, solved, yeah, I think you have solved one of the challenges. That is wonderful news. So thank, thank you. you. So thank you, Mr. Secretary. <laughs>